morning, a ninth planet. Yeah, that's just what researchers at Caltech think they found. So could this be possible? Well, we sent our very own science buff, Joel Nichols, to get the scoop from the experts at the Arvin Gottlieb Planetarium. Okay, Joel, could Pluto have a replacement here? See, that's what I'm a little troubled by, because I wasn't a big fan of knocking Pluto off the list. Because when I was a kid, you did that rhyme, you know, Mer uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, these are the planets, and on and on, ending with Pluto. Well, now there might be a ninth planet out there, although, as you mentioned, the researchers at Caltech haven't actually seen it, but they think it's there. And so we have brought in our expert, Patrick Hess, who's an educator <laughs> here at Science City, here in the planetarium, and explain this whole ninth planet idea to us. What is this all about? Now? Well, just to put into perspective just how far away we're talking about, okay. um, if this is the Earth, the right. six-inch ball, and this is the moon, how far apart do you think these would be to scale? Oh, man, I don't know. Where would you be? 15 feet. Really? That's just the So Earth I'd have to stand 15 feet away from you to make that look. Exactly. Okay. Now, Pluto, um, our favorite non-planet, uh, Ooh, would be, yes. oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> would be uh, around Lawrence at this scale. Oh, okay. And then this other planet could be anywhere between Wichita and Denver, Colorado. So we're talking about distances very, very, wow. very far away. How do they even know it's there then if they haven't seen it? Well, we don't know it is there. Uh, what we do know is that there seems to be something very, very far away around uh, that area that seems to be affecting the orbits of other objects uh, out in our solar system. So scientists have been measuring and mapping out the orbits of these distant uh, asteroids and uh, dwarf planets and things like that, and there seems to be something sort of jiggling them or moving them around. Um, so hmm. uh, there could be another planet. It could be something else. We don't know, but this is sort of the same evidence that led us to discover Neptune eventually. Right. Um, so this could be that uh, extra push that scientists need to go find another planet. I read somewhere, I may have, I thought I read that they're trying to come up with a name for this planet mm -hmm. now. It, what, what should it be named? If you're, you're a scientist, what would you name this planet? <laughs> Well, uh, planets are often named based on mythology, uh, specifically Greek mythology, using the Roman names. Right. Um, so there are a lot of different ideas floating around. Um, some people just want to call it Planet Nine from Outer Space. There you go. Um, <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> planet X is another favorite, but who really knows? Uh, there are a bunch of different uh, figures from Greek mythology. What's going to make that a planet and take poor little Pluto that I grew up believing was a planet <laughs> my whole life, and then you scientists crushed my dream? Sure. And what makes this a planet and Pluto not a planet? Well, in 2006, we sort of reclassified what planets were. Um, problem is, we discovered a bunch of other things that were about Pluto's size that were also planets, right. um, or would have been planets. So either we added about, about 20 new planets, or we uh, demoted Pluto. So it's going to be a little bit easier to demote Pluto, unfortunately. Well, that's very sad. I Show know. us the moon again. Uh, so this would See, be the moon There's the moon, the there's Earth. The thing that's sad is I would have always guessed the moon was a titleist, but apparently not. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the five planets that you can see all at the same time for a few more, uh, maybe a couple more weeks. We'll talk to Patrick about that, too. you got to look up to see all the good stuff. Back to you.